Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another beautiful day at Curb Bootcamp on Curb TV with me, Jack, uh, from the Curb Markets team. Uh, I'm definitely in a Americana kind of mood today after receiving a nice T-shirt from uh, the from uh, Animes, um, and who also gave me a lovely little uh, cookbook here as well, which I'm definitely going to be um, perusing through and cooking something from. So it's definitely my craving uh, for today. I definitely it's kind of sunny, but a little bit cold. Um, maybe that's just my flat. I don't know. Uh, but you can um, you can support Animes and all of our other traders via our Keep the Wheels Turning campaign, um, which is at CurbFood.com store, which is kind of just above my head, just there. Um, so yeah, we're going to continue this week's uh, Curb Bootcamp. Um, so you know, another opportunity to get last on the trails um, around Lake Opportunity um, and to find that elusive street food gold. Um, so last week we did our how to run a street food business and, uh, which you can all find on our YouTube channel. And for today's session, we're going to go back to talking about branding. And, um, we had Cara Benden last week talking about, um, what you can do whilst you're in isolation to kind of create your brand. And, uh, there are still lots of things you can do whilst you're inside, whilst you plan for the future. And I'm, de I'm not a branding expert, but it's definitely one of the things that, um, excites me and interests me most when we have new street food businesses and, and older street food businesses as well. Um, and street food is a really great opportunity to kind of create a name for yourself. And since you don't have a bricks and mortar uh, uh, location, you need to use that to, to your advantage. And creating an amazing brand is a way to stand out. And that's definitely what Curb alumni like Bao or Bleak or, or Pizza Pilgrims have done um, to stand out and kind of stick in people's heads. Um, so first, what we're going to do is we're going to reintroduce Carly, um, who was the first winner of our consultation challenge. So, um, yeah, she's there. Ollie's here as well. Hi. Hello. Uh, how, how are you guys today? What's your street food craving today? Uh, oh, I think because we're, no, I don't want to spoil it, but whoever's coming up later, their <laughs> lunchbox. Oh, yeah. Good choice. Good choice. Yeah. How about you, Carly? Um, I'd probably, oh, I don't know, maybe a Vietnamese, a oh. phone. Oh, yeah. I, mm. I could do with a nice ban me right now, actually. Annoy Kitchen. Mm. Yeah. Good shout. Mm. Um, so, uh, how how did you find yesterday's homework? Oh, for anyone who, was, who wasn't watching yesterday, we basically talked about um, Carly's kind of inspiration and dishes that she'd like to do as part of her street food business and i gave her a bit of homework to talk about um branding ideas so how, how did you get on with that how was that process for you um it was quite it was quite hard because like branding is the one thing i've just really struggled with there's just okay. so many ideas, like popping everywhere yeah and like one minute i want to do this one minute i want to do that so it's quite hard to really put it down in words what i really want for my brand yeah it's, it's a difficult process for sure yeah. because yeah. It, that translating that like original idea and inspiration into something that like communicates that with the rest of the world um yeah. that's hard it's hard sometimes people yeah they do kind of just fall onto something that works amazingly like catch something and sometimes things need a little bit longer to mm -hmm. define yeah, um, I think there's always also like quite a lot of pressure to get it almost like st right from the outset. Or actually, yeah. it's, you don't need to do that. Yeah, yeah. it's um, yeah. I, you can develop it as you go through. Yeah, I definitely feel like it's going to have a rebrand at some point because mm -hmm. obviously I don't have the budget right now either to make it the way I want it. Yeah. But even just starting with like the bare bones of like what where you want to go and what you want to do with it, um, yeah. that, that's a really good thing to do at this stage. Mm. So um, what we're going to do today is um, I've invited um, Chantel from Chubby Dumplings, um, and who's here now. How are you, Chantel? Good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, so it's it's quite nice that we invited you on to today's. I actually invited you to you before we kind of like chose our winner. But it, it's actually really nice just to show like how small the world is. Um, so Carly, um, you grew up in Salisbury, right? Did you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and no yesterday we were talking about um, about who we had on the show, and and Carly said that she used to go to your family restaurant 
when she was growing up. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I, when I first moved to the UK, that's where we ended up. And I was in Salisbury for eight years. We'd go to Jade, like, for special occasions. Oh. And I was dad, like, deboning the fish at the table. And I thought it was just yeah. amazing. <laughs> oh, and, that's so nice. Yeah. yeah. And I thought that's like that's like a really good, um, uh, just an amazing connection that's that would would have never really found. Well, maybe down the line we yeah. might have realised that, but yeah. it's it's funny how we can make those connections. Um, so yeah, and I think like you both, like so Chantel, obviously you run Chubby Dumplings from your street food van, and you've been doing. You came and joined the Incubator program in May last year. Is that mm -hmm. right? And um, so what, what I'm going to do today is kind of use some of Cara's street food branding isolation 101 tips as a way to kind of talk about how you approach your branding and things that Carly can do to kind of work on her branding before she kind of gets onto the street. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Cool. Um, so the first thing, first thing that, um, that Cara talked about um, was checking your name. And the idea of it being kind of catchy, clear, memorable, and related to the cuisine. And so, um, Chantel, like when you were thinking of your brand and like your business, like how did you approach that name? Like, was it something that just kind of came to you, or is it something you had to kind of work on for a while? Um, so for me, so at the beginning, I had a bunch of names which I wanted, and Chubby Dumping was one because it's it's what my dad used to call me. But I wasn't sure if. Um, if it was right because I didn't like when, it, when you first say it, it kind of sounds a bit weird and I didn't know if people would kind of I don't know I didn't know if there'd be problems with it or if it was a bit too like weird yeah um, so I had a couple of other ones which was like because I have the van I don't know if you've seen it but it's just like a big black box van I was going to call it like the dumpling box or something like really simple just to be like nothing too crazy yeah um or like oh, I can't remember what the other ones were but they were just like pretty boring ones um, and then I sat down um, with a friend who's really good at marketing and he told me to write a list of um, like the emotions that I want customers to feel from our brand and how we want to get that across. And then, so for me, it was all about like my dad's dumpling. So it was all like quite nostalgic and quite like, it was like me as a kid um, being really like happy and like, I would eat his dumplings when I went into Jade and he'd like cook them just for us. And it was like the best thing ever because they were delicious. Yeah. Um, and all the kind of things I was writing down were like, like the dumpling box didn't really sum that up. It kind of sounded like way too serious and way too sleek, which is just not really like the vibe that I kind of what had in my head. Yeah, for sure. Um, so then out of the list of words as well that I wrote, I just wrote down like a list of words that I thought related to it and like chubby was one of them because it's like what my whole family called me. Yeah. And it's got it's got that kind of cheeky personalness to it yeah. as well. So and then, think, yeah. Out of yeah. all the and I kinda of wanted the word dumpling in it because it's our main thing and I just wanted everything to be like super clear and just like that's the main show. Yeah. Um, I was going to say it's quite interesting to contrast that with Dumpling Shack, who I think yeah. when they first started, because they started at Nettle Market and it was essentially a shack, no, not yeah. a Nettle, um, Broadway schoolyard. Um, yeah. It's very like clear what they're doing, but I think they built their brand over time just by people coming to it. And actually the name for them almost is like a placeholder. Yeah. Like Dumpling Shack doesn't say much about it, but it's taken them ages to build that brand. And now it's yeah. like amazing and yeah. super strong. But I think it, if they had started off with a clear identity of what they're doing, maybe it would have yeah. uh, their path would have been slightly different. Yeah, um, yeah, and I guess like everyone approaches it in different ways. But um, yeah. yeah, I think definitely writing down because I'm so glad I didn't go with something box now. It's just like yeah, yeah really. Um, but I think, yeah, writing down like a list of words that you, or like emotions that you want your brand to represent and like people to feel when they come to you. And like, if you have yeah. like a color which you think would like, I don't know if you've got a van or a gazebo or you like. A gazebo. 
So have you got? You haven't got branding yet. Oh. Well, I kind of I thought about the name and started the brand, but it's just nowhere near complete yet. Yeah. Um, do you have like colors or like? I mean, like in the middle of that, trying to decide it all. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that, that's why this is perfect because we're yeah. like talking about all of these things and yeah. kind of can keep like going back to the drawing board and just writing yeah. those ideas down and and like thinking like what's next. Yeah. What is, What is your food? So basically, I'm from Hunan. I don't know if you've ever been to China, that sort of that okay. part. Um, but basically, we eat really spicy food and it's lots of chilies, lots of pickles, really bold flavours. So basically, that's the food I want to kind of really bring to like a wider public. Mm -hmm. So like really re regional cuisine. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And what was your signature dish? My signature dish was a red braised pork belly. Mm. It's such a classic in like every every Chinese home. Yeah. Just like a really rich pork belly stew. Yeah. So I, I, I was um I was trying to find where you could eat this in London. And I presume that there it is sold like quite widely. But mm -hmm. the like Hunan specific restaurants, there seems to be like t two. Mm. Yeah. Like, in. There's one in um near Angel. I can't remember the name, yeah, but I, was, like, like, I think that must be Yipin. Yeah, yeah it, that's probably the most authentic one I've tried to date. There was one in Shoreditch where my dad's friend was actually a chef, so he was from my hometown, but it got shut down because like not many people knew about it. Right. Okay. But yeah, I think the red braised the red braised pork thing sounds incredible. Mm. Yeah, and so I guess it's about thinking like in terms of a name and and, and your brand and colors and all those things. Like, what could celebrate that dish that m most people might not have ever had an opportunity to try or to to eat, and yeah. what what can like stand out against those people um, against like other what people think already as like Chinese food, um, mm -hmm. and that that's something like I feel I feel like. Chantel, like on our markets, you've done like really, really well. Like when you come onto a market, it's the van is so it's a black van, like you said, but it has quite a lot of color and personality, like and it stands out. And what what was the process like of of creating things to like jazz up the van? Um, basically, I think for any brand, if you've got like a gazebo or a van, or whatever, you could have um. A sign at the top which says like which sums up what you do so that's why i've got like a big light box saying dumplings so as soon as if you're the other side of the market you can see a sign saying dumplings and you know that's what we do um i feel like that's kind of like the most that was like one of the first things i wanted to make sure uh we had because even if you've got brand on the van if people are still in front of it or whatever you can't see um and i mean i actually want to get some more branding on ours but we're just being really indecisive about what to get um yeah. uh, taking your time that's good like you know yeah. you, you have to pay you have to spend money on it and you want it to to it's make an impact yeah i think yeah it's like worth spending money on a main sign to put at the top of what you do and get that done nicely and like because that can just obviously like bring so many more people in yeah um, and i feel like like with yours um what like what nice guys did quite well is that their dishes are like classic Chinese, like boiled chicken and stuff. It's like very mm. Chinese and not really eaten by English people normally, I don't think. I thought like, I don't think so. Um, but by just calling, by well, I was, like all English people eat rice and they all know what it's like. And then having like chicken and rice is like a very relatable thing, but like making, bringing the new flavors to get people to try something new without it being like too scary for them to have yeah. something. So I feel like so you can, do yours as well yeah. like everyone loves pork belly everyone are you gonna serve it with rice or yeah yeah so it's like a rice box yeah yeah, yeah. great yeah. see i'm quite keen for carly to put uh fish heads on the menu because she just said that that was like a a dish that she would serve yeah like normally but i i can understand why it would be a, a hard sell to the canary wharf <laughs> Working. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. if we'll go down well for like a lunchtime market, but yeah. But then I'll that's the thing, like we were talking about yesterday about like where is you want to go as well, 
And like, if that's the idea of doing something that brave and bold on the street, translating to like a bricks and mortar site, that could be a really cool story. But mm. I guess that that's something when you come back onto the streets, you can try and see like maybe like maybe a weekend market. Maybe people will be really up for trying that. You know, maybe there can be a prize for whoever tries it. Yeah, the exactly. that's that's a really good idea actually. Yeah, you know, like that's a great. Uh, you know, them kissing like the fish head or something. <laughs> you know, it's, it's those kind of, and I think, yeah, you have to find like the little unique things about your brand or like a little story that you can play around with your dishes. And that mm -hmm. sometimes just being out in the street is the best way to, to find that. Um, in terms of branding as well, like we've skipped a step, but it's okay. Um, I, I remember Chantel, when you came and did a tasting with us, and uh, you like went to get onto the incubator program, which is what a lot of people um, do. And they can they come to our office and cook some stuff or bring some stuff they already prepared. And I remember you came um, with your dad, and you you know you had the chili sauce, you had the dumplings. But the thing that stood us out to us most about like from like a brand perspective was the little booklet that you brought with us with you. Mm. Do you want to talk about just like what that was and why and why you did that? Um, I well, I work as a graphic designer as well, um, okay. and so does my boyfriend. So we um, think about branding more than a non-person probably. So when I was doing it, when we started, um, like I feel like with any company, actually, I feel like the most important thing is to, like get your your attitude or your personality or your story across, um, mm -hmm. and in whatever. Like if you're really cool and really sleek, or if you're like mad or if you're like I don't know whatever um you want to get that close and then so for us our whole thing is like about my dad's dumplings and about how um he had the jade and um then retired and then just like it's been obsessed with making dumplings and I was like such like a nice thing for, for me as well um and we kind of just wanted to make sure that story got across like really quickly and um kind of just to explain to everyone and explain to Curb like why we were doing it and why we started and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, then, yeah, it was quite nice for us to actually get that booklet done because also for me it just like cleared up. It was good to like sort of write the points of um, yeah the story and and like what we wanted to do and where we wanted to go um, and it it was really nice as well because when people were in the room eating your dumplings they they said it was you know they enjoyed it but there was also something else that they could interact with so mm. it was it was it was those kind of listing those feelings that you wanted the dumplings to do with with something else like complimenting them it was a nice side dish basically okay. i know i know with um with like people who do like legitimate brand designing companies and stuff like that they almost create a storyline as well yeah so when you um when you read up about one of Deshoom's new sites, they'll talk about like the experience of, so for the King's Cross one, the idea is that it's like a Iranian cafe, cafe in uh, Bombay and it's by the station. And so it's like all the stuff is like, yeah. slowly, like, like altered slightly to be more like train-like compared to their other places. Yeah. So they literally write a whole storyline about exactly what that person's going to be feeling and experiencing that place. Mm. Yeah. And so, Carly, so Carly, that might be a nice thing for you to do in terms of like coming up with your brand, like documenting the story or like at least the process of like where you've what start, what you started with to where yeah. where where is your kind of going, and that yeah. could be a really nice exercise to like help you figure out like how exactly you want to brand um, this to the world. Yeah, yeah, I think with my thing that definitely the usp is like how personal it is it's almost kind of like me telling my story and my journey almost like tracing yeah. back to what it means to be like a hunanese yeah so i think that's the one thing i really want to push in my branding cool that's that's a great that's a great place to start from and like focus on yeah. um, and so um kind of complementing like both those things obviously um we, you know, social media and, and Instagram is like so important to that mm -hmm. story. And like Chantel, you do, you, you have like a, I think you have like a really nice Instagram 
uh, page and and it, it definitely like elicits a lot of those kind of things that are important about the brand like you see lots of pictures of like your dad making dumplings um and like the handmade kind of aspect of it um how, like, how do you approach doing that um i i mean i try and just like take loads of photos at markets like these ones that are on screen now are like a bit older but um since then I've been trying to sort of keep it a bit more consistent. So like these ones are all like a bit brighter because I decided that our whole thing was like, we want to be like fun and like colorful, which represents our brand again. So yeah. I wanted the photos to be pretty like colorful and bright and stuff rather than like, like you could be going all that kind of like faded out coloring or all black and white or whatever. Yeah. Um, but so I just wanted to get that across that that's what I'm going to do. And then I was reading a thing about, um, Instagram and if someone goes on your page at any one time if they only probably look at like like that and then one more scroll then you need to get your whole story across in those two pages of whatever's at the top and then some people okay. down some people don't so that's why I try and like make sure there's pictures of the meal pictures of raw dumplings pictures of my dad whatever and um, but yeah, I don't, yeah can I ask a question yeah Going back, is was this the original logo for Chubby Dog? <laughs> that was um, so. My boyfriend did that at the beginning as a logo idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite so, cute. I, well, I think it's quite. I think it's quite interesting for Carly at this stage to see that you sort of started documenting each process of your business mm -hmm. as you went along. Yeah. Like from yeah. buying the van to mm. testing out recipes with your dad. Yeah. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Going for dinner. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, th I think that that kind of thing is really nice. So yeah. people, yeah. If, they, if they really want to engage with your brand, they can go back and look at the whole history. Oh, of oh, yeah. 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 And I think that's one of the things that um, Cara was talking about as well. Like, it's it's about making things that are relatable and that people can understand, like what you do. But it's also okay to. Um, like acknowledge the times that we're living in and acknowledge the fact that things are a bit weird and a bit strange and you're kind of doing things that are like you might not have normally been doing so Carly that could be I don't know if you've started like an Instagram page or anything for, yeah. for this yet but maybe that's something that I think that people might could be quite interested like in mm -hmm. that story and also just being part of this story in the sense that we you applied for a consultation and you won and you're kind of creating your business online with hundreds of people watching at the same time like that's quite a that's quite a cool unusual story to have yeah i did a little insta story last night and then my friend actually suggested that i should edit like a 15 second promo of all the like snapshots so that's going to be my aim this week nice awesome that's really cool Okay, um, so uh, Chantelle, like, how how are things for Shabby Dumpling at the moment, and like, how have you kind of like had to pivot um, from what you were doing before, and and what's that kind of told you about the kind of the core of Chubby Dumpling? Um, at the moment, we're selling dumplings frozen, which um, actually didn't start doing because of for money. I mean, obviously, you need the money too, but um, my dad was like thought he was going to go mad um, because he wasn't going to be making any dumplings. So he was just like, I'm going to be so bored. So um, I started selling them frozen just to keep them busy, actually. But also it's great because it's keeping us busy and still making money. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, just doing that and then I think it's, it's good to still be able to be doing working and um, providing food because the whole thing is like, feeding people, obviously, um, yeah. and trying to give people that food that makes them happy that isn't necessarily something they just eat at home. Like, not many people make their own dumplings at home. Mm -hmm. um, what, what was the question, sorry? <laughs> no, I, I just wanted, I asked like, what you're up to now. Cause just oh, cause right. it's interesting, like how, you, how you've had to change, but also um, like, has it, has, it, has it kind of, reminded you or kind of I, i've talking to a lot of street food traders they've kind of had to go like back to basics like back to step one you know from employing loads of people to literally maybe mm -hmm. just being them again and i was just interested to see like 
if it were if does it do you feel like you're at back at the start you know um, not like too much. i mean we've been going for like less than a year yeah um so for us it's not like we had loads of full-time staff or anything we just had people on a freelance basis so in that way it's lucky um and everyone we work with has other work as well so it's really good we don't have to have that like horrible thing of trying to yeah put money out um and then because we're selling dumplings frozen means we're still like working and still like when i go drop them off at people's houses and say hi everyone's like super nice really happy really grateful and it's like yeah that's like the best bit about working in the markets is like having the interaction with the people and people coming and telling you that they love your food and that's yeah. what i miss actually and like can't wait till we can be working again and like be in the van. It's just like such a nice thing. And like, yeah, yeah you like feel like, yeah, it's just like a really good feeling basically. Um, and obviously you don't get that as much unless you're properly interacting with customers. And like, um, I was talking to a couple of people that are doing like the room now and obviously you don't have that interaction at all. It's just like, you just send it off and hope they like it. Kind of yeah, kind of just send it out into the ether. Yeah, yeah. So it's weird, but I mean, yeah hopefully it will just be okay and then hopefully yeah i i'm i, I think things that, there's going to be like a new normal that people take time to get used to but yeah. i think people are going to be like itching to get back on outside yeah. and spend money and not cook and like just you know just to be catered for and be looked after and that's like the real core of hospitality and that's the thing that makes people like us like itchy to like go outside and yeah you know, so Ollie has Shantel. a question, I think. Yeah, Chantal, we've got a question for you from, mm. a, from a viewer. This is from Veronica. She says, do you provide instructions on how to cook frozen dumplings? Yes. Just for the people not to spoil your food? Yes. So when and people do them, I email over the instructions when, when nice. we take the payment. Yeah. Uh, how can people get these dumplings? Um, if you email us, but we're only really doing like Southeast London at the moment, mostly. Um, so if you're in Southeast London, you can email us or Instagram me and uh, I'll send you the menu. Awesome. We need, to, we need to get you on the MyPie supply chain so we can get some dumplings sent up North London. Yeah. That would be great. Um, so Chantal, thanks for joining us today. Um, I just, just before you leave, do you have like a piece of advice for Carly in terms of like branding, but also just anything to do with like her street food business and like what she can do in this time? Um, have you, you haven't, so you, you're just sort of recipe testing at the moment. You haven't got like a name and have you got a name? So I had a name, it was Soy Yum. So, yeah. so I kind of just went down the road of just like doing something really lighthearted and quite fun. But actually thinking about what Jack said yesterday, I'm like in the middle of changing my mind. So we'll see. Okay. Um, I mean, for now, I'd probably like just, yeah, I'd probably just do the thing where you write down, just get a piece of paper and like write down all the emotions or the feelings that you want your brand to represent. And, and then mm -hmm. it's like, yeah make it like really clear what you do so that someone from the other side of the market can recognize that whether it's like even just making it really clear that it's chinese just put like yeah. letters up there or whatever mm. um yeah and then just like working out your story and like explaining why you're starting the business and um and then why people should eat your food basically awesome thank you so much <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Really helpful. Lovely talking to you. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Good luck. Bye. 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 Okay. See you soon. Um, um, so, Carly, how did you find that? Yeah, really good. Informative. I know yeah. the next I need to take. Yeah, I think I think it's like it's like the the mo the one of the most fun things about creating a business. Yeah, um, it's like challenging, but this is like the fun, exciting like part of it. I know Ollie always has this like this graph for like street food traders and this is the bit where it's like going up like this. Um, yeah. because it's just like getting more exciting and just like nailing the recipe and nailing the brand and like seeing how exciting it is. Yeah. Um, so hopefully um talking to Chantel and like getting some ideas from that um kind of will like that list of like emotions that you want kind of thing uh people to have about your brand i think that's like a great 
uh, place to start. Yeah. Um, so we'll be back tomorrow as well. Um, Ollie, do you want to talk a bit more about what we're going to be doing tomorrow? Yes. So um, until you've actually started trading on the street, you might not know exactly what kind of equipment you need or how to cook stuff, whether to prep stuff in advance, whether to do stuff on the stool. So we've got Joel from Oh My Dog. He has been trading for six years, I think. Sounds about right. Yeah, we met him at a beer festival back in the day. So that was very fun. Um, he is an expert in when it comes to equipment. He's got probably the biggest collection of fryers in London. He rents stuff out to people. He's got loads of stuff. But he's Maybe. also like a wealth of knowledge about the best equipment. Yeah. yeah. So we'll go through your cooking process and we'll get him to recommend the kind of equipment that you should need or whether or not you could adapt what you're doing to make it quicker. Mm -hmm. stuff in advance just to make your life simpler basically yeah yeah and so, nice. so your homework for tomorrow is cool. to go on the street food starter pack um and look through the equipment section which i think joel wrote or he he definitely spoke with ollie about every different other piece of equipment <laughs> just have a read through that um, yeah. to get, get the wheels turning um and yeah that'll be really fun sounds good okay cool. We'll Thanks talk so to you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Great. Okay, awesome. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, hopefully that gave a bit of insight into the kind of the fun things you can do to approach uh, branding your street food business. Um, Cara Benden, who came on our show uh, last week, um, she has a load of resources on her website, carabenden.com, which you can access for free. Um, there's also stuff on the Street Food Starter Pack, which has a link um, in the YouTube comments below. And you can also support Chantel from Shubby Dumpling and all of our other traders on curbfood.store, which is just here. And yeah, we're going to be talking to the amazing, um, charming, knowledgeable um, Joel from Oh My Dog tomorrow, all about uh, equipment and how to cook things at markets and like where to start from. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for joining us and see you tomorrow. Bye.